نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم أشهد أن لا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله we invite our community a broader community and the public to be part of the خير and goodness that happens here at our institution Darut Turat al-Islami. What makes us unique and very different to many other institutions is the fact that Darut that hosts a number of organizations and a number of religious projects. From the religious projects that we are running from our center is that we conduct a full-time Darul Ulum or a Ribalt consisting of just about over 100 students that are all well on their way to become ulama, scholars within the community, the classes are conducted in the Arabic language, students converse in the Arabic language and uh, the graduates of this institute, the full-time Darul Safa, they serve as Imams in Masajid and teachers at other institutions. In addition to that, we have the girls Hiv school and the boys Hiv school that collectively host just over 100 students, young girls and boys studying the kalam of our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of them have already completed the memorization of the Quran and are standing within our masajid, keeping the masajid alive during the month of Ramadan, during the tarawih prayer with the melodious voices. Uh, we also have part-time hiv opportunities for people that come in in the afternoons that memorizes the Quran. We have the maktab or afternoon madrasa system. We have a maktab that runs from Monday to Thursday. We have a special maktab that has recently been launched on a Friday afternoon as well as a Saturday morning. Uh, also one of the highlights of our programs is the Darul Safa part-time Saturday morning classes as well as the Mustafa College Saturday morning classes that host nearly 300 students, uh, all young professionals, working class people that are coming and attending our center on a Saturday morning. The wealthy of every human being lies in the teachings and the dictates of the Sharia and that's what we're imparting through all our various projects. Our students bring about that environment of the wealthy of Muslims, the wealthy of human, be human beings, the implementation of the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I'm not able to memorize the Quran by myself, by donating generously, I will receive the reward as if I am memorizing the Quran. If I cannot study the Arabic language, if I cannot uh, receive Islamic education on a higher level that, that, that ensures the preservation of deen within our communities, by donating generously, I receive the reward as if I am preserving deen as how our mashayikh and the ulama are preserving deen. And thus uh, we call out to the, our communities that in this Ramadan, open up your hearts, uh, donate and benefit students and benefit teachers and benefit uh, institutions, the Hiv institution, the part-time institution, the full-time Darul Ulum, uh, be part of the khair, be part of the goodness, be the change that you wish to observe within our communities. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen.
بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله we invite our community a broader community and the public to be part of the خير and goodness that happens here at our institution دار التراث الإسلامي what makes us unique and very different to many other institutions is the fact that Daru Turath al-Islami is an umbrella institute that hosts a number of organizations and a number of religious projects. From the religious projects that we are running from our center is that we conduct a full-time Darul Ulum or a Ribal consisting of just about over 100 students that are all well on their way to become ulama, scholars within the community. The classes are conducted in the Arabic language, students converse in the Arabic language, and uh, the graduates of this institute, the full-time Darul Safa, they serve as imams in masajid and teachers at other institutions. In addition to that, we have the girls' hiv school and the boys' hiv school that collectively host just over 100 students, young girls and boys, studying the kalam of our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of them have already completed the memorization of the Quran and are standing within our masajid, keeping the masajid alive during the month of Ramadan, during the tarawih prayer with the melodious voices. Uh, we also have part-time hiv opportunities for people that come in in the afternoons that memorizes the Quran. We have the maktab or afternoon madrasa system. We have a maktab that runs from Monday to Thursday. We have a special maktab that has recently been launched on a Friday afternoon as well as a Saturday morning. Uh, also, one of the highlights of our programs is the Darul Safa part-time Saturday morning classes as well as the Mustafa College Saturday morning classes that host nearly 300 students, uh, all young professionals, working class people that are coming and attending our center on a Saturday morning. The welfare of every human being lies in the teachings and the dictates of the Sharia ah, and that's what we're imparting through all our various projects. Our students bring about that environment of the wealthy of Muslims, the wealthy of human, be human beings, the implementation of the Sharia ah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I'm not able to memorize the Quran by myself, by donating generously, I will receive the reward as if I'm memorizing the Quran. If I cannot study the Arabic language, if I cannot uh, receive Islamic education on a higher level that, that, that ensures the preservation of deen within our communities, by donating generously, I receive the reward as if I am preserving deen as how our mashayikh and the ulama are preserving deen. And thus uh, we call out to the, our communities that in this Ramadan, open up your hearts, uh, donate and benefit students and benefit teachers and benefit uh, institutions, the Hiv institution, the part-time institution, the full-time Darul Ulum, uh, be part of the khair, be part of the goodness, be the change that you wish to observe within our communities. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala... بذكر الله لا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب أفضل الذكر فأعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله لا إله إلا 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 الله 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 
Allah, 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 la ilaha illa Allah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, la ilaha illa Allah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, la ilaha illa Allah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه الفاتحه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اذا وقعت الواقعه ليس لوقعتها كاذبه خافضه رافعه اذا رجت الارض رجا وبست الجبال بسا فكانت هباء منبثا وكنتم ازواجا ثلاثه فأصحاب الميمنة ما أصحاب الميمنة وأصحاب المشأمة ما أصحاب المشأمة والسابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون في جنات النعيم ثلة من الأولين وقليل من الآخرين على سرر موضونة متكين عليها متقابلين يطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون بأكواب وأباريق وكأس من معين لا يصدعون عنها ولا ينزفون وفاكهة مما يتخيرون ولحم طير مما يشتهون وحور عين كأمثال اللؤلؤ المكنون جزاء بما كانوا يعملون لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما وأصحاب اليمين ما أصحاب اليمين في سدر مخضود وطلح منضود وظل ممدود وماء مسكوب وفاكهة كثيرة لا مقطوعة ولا ممنوعة وفرش مرفوعة إنا أنشأناهن إن شاء فجعلناهن أبكارا عربا أترابا لأصحاب اليمين ثلة من الأولين وثلة من الآخرين وأصحاب الشمال ما أصحاب الشمال في سموم وحميم وظل من يحموم لا بارد ولا كريم إنهم كانوا قبل ذلك مترفين وكانوا يسرون على الحنث العظيم وكانوا يقولون أئذا متنا وكنا ترابا وعظاما أئنا لمبعوثون أو آباؤنا الأولون قل إن الأولين والآخرين لمجموعون إلى ميقات يوم معلوم ثم إنكم أيها الضالون المكذبون لآكلون من شجر من زقوم فمالئون منها البطون فشاربون عليه من الحميم فشاربون شرب الهيم هذا نزلهم يوم الدين نحن خلقناكم فلولا تصدقون أفرأيتم ما تمنون أنتم تخلقونه أم نحن الخالقون نحن قدرنا بينكم الموت وما نحن بمسموقين على أن نبدل أمثالكم وننشئكم فيما لا تعلمون ولقد علمتم النشأة الأولى فلولا تذكرون أفرأيتم ما تحرثون أأنتم تزرعونه أم نحن الزارعون لو نشاء لجعلناه حطاما فظلتم تفكهون إنا لمغرمون بل نحن محرومون أفرأيتم الماء الذي تشربون أأنتم أنزلتموه من المزن أم نحن المنزلون لو نشاء جعلناه أجاجا فلولا تشكرون أفرأيتم النار التي تورون أأنتم أنشأتم شجرتها أم نحن المنشئون نحن جعلناها تذكرة ومتاعا للمقوين فسبح باسم ربك العظيم فلا أقسم بمواقع النجوم وإنه لقسم لو تعلمون عظيم إنه لقرآن كريم في كتاب مكنون لا يمسه إلا المطهرون تنزيل من رب العالمين أفبهذا الحديث أنتم مدهنون وتجعلون رزقكم أنكم تكذبون فلولا إذا بلغت الحلقوم وأنتم حينئذ تنظرون ونحن أقرب إليه منكم ولكن لا تبصرون فلولا إن كنتم غير مدينين ترجعونها إن كنتم صادقين 
فأما إن كان من المقربين فروح وريحان وجنة نعيم وأما إن كان من أصحاب اليمين فسلام لك من أصحاب اليمين وأما إن كان من المكذبين الضالين فنزل من حميم وتصلية جحيم إن هذا له حق اليقين فسبح باسم ربك العظيم سبحان ربي العظيم بحمده اللهم صن وجوهنا باليسار ولا تهنا بالإجتار فنسترزق طالبي رزقك ونستعطف شرار خلقك ونشتغل بحمد من أعطانا ونبتلى بذنب من منعنا وأنت من وراء ذلك كله أهل العطاء والمنع اللهم كما صنت وجوهنا عن السجود إلا لك فصنا عن الحاجة إلا إليك بجودك وكرمك وفضلك يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين اغننا بفضلك عمن سواك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وهب لنا به صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من رزقك حلالا طيب المبارك ما تصون به وجوهنا عن التعرض إلى أحد من خلقك وجعل اللهم لنا إليه طريقا سهلا من غير فتنة ولا محنة ولا منة ولا تبعة لأحد وجنبنا اللهم الحرام حيث كان أين كان عند من كان وحل بيننا وبين أهلي وقبض عنا أيديهم واصرف عنا وجوههم وقلوبهم حتى لا نتقلب إلا فيما يرضيك ولا نستعين بنعمتك إلا فيما تحبه وترضاه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن كان رزقنا في السماء فأنزل وإن كان في الأرض فأخرج وإن كان معسرا فيسر وإن كان بعيدا فقرب وإن كان حراما فطهر وإن كان قليلا فكثر وإن كان معدوما فأوجد وإن كان موقوفا فاجره وإن كان ذنبا فاغفره وإن كان سيئة فامحها وإن كان عثرة فأقلها وبارك لنا في جميع ذلك إنك ملك مقتدر وما تشاؤه من أمر يكون يا من إذا أراد شيئا إنما يقول له كن فيكون سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم يا الله يا علي يا عظيم يا حليم يا عليم أنت ربي وعلمك حسبي فنعم الرب ربي ونعم الحسب حسبي تنصر من تشاء وأنت العزيز الرحيم نسألك العصمة في الحركات والسكنات والكلمات والإرادات والخطرات من الشكوك والظنون والأوهام ساترة للقلوب عن مطالعة الغيوب فقد ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرض ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا فثبتنا وانصرنا وسخر لنا هذا البحر كما سخرت البحر لموسى وسخرت النار لإبراهيم وسخرت الجبال والحديد لداود وسخرت الريح والشياطين والجن لسليمان وسخر لنا كل بحر هو لك في الأرض والسماء 
والملك والملكوت وبحر الدنيا وبحر الآخرة وسخر لنا كل شيء يا من بيده ملكوت كل شيء كافا يا عين صاد كافا يا عين صاد كافا يا عين صاد انظرنا فإنك خير الناصرين وافتح لنا فإنك خير الفاتحين واغفر لنا فإنك خير الغافرين وارحمنا فإنك خير الراحمين وارزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين واهدنا ونجنا من القوم الظالمين وهب لنا ريحا طيبة كما هي في علمك وانشرها علينا من خزائن رحمتك واحملنا بها حمل الكرامة مع السلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في ديننا ودنيانا وكلنا صاحبا في سفرنا وخليفة في أهلنا وطمس على وجوه أعدائنا وامسخهم على مكانتهم فلا يستطيعون المضيء ولا المجيء إلينا ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون يا سين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون شات الوجوه شات الوجوه شات الوجوه وعنت الوجوه للحي القيوم وقد خاب من حمل ظلما طاسين حميم عيسين قاف مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان حميم 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 حمى الأمر وجاء النصر فعلينا لا ينصرون حميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب ذي الطول لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير بسم الله بابنا تبارك حيطاننا يا سين سقفنا كافا يا عين صاد كفايتنا حميم عين سين قاف حمايتنا فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم ستر العرش مسبول علينا وعين الله ناظرة إلينا بحول الله لا يقدر علينا والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ فالله خير حافظ وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظ وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظ وهو أرحم الراحمين إنا ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما 
الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء واسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم يا الله يا نور يا حق يا مبين أكسني من نورك وعلمني من علمك وأفهمني عنك وأسمعني منك وبصرني بك وأقمني بشهودك وعرفني الطريق إليك وهونها علي بفضلك وألبسني لباس التقوى منك إنك على كل شيء قدير يا سميع يا عليم يا حليم يا علي يا عظيم يا الله اسمع دعائي بخصائص لطفك آمين أعوذ بكلمات الله تامات كلها من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله تامات كلها من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله تامات كلها من شر ما خلق يا عظيم السلطان يا قديم الإحسان يا دائم النعمة يا باسط الرزق يا كثير الخيرات يا واسع العطاء ويا دافع البلاء ويا سامع الدعاء يا حاضرا ليس بغائب يا موجودا عند الشدائد يا خفي اللطف يا لطيف الصنع يا حليما لا يعجل اقض حاجتي برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنك تعلم ما نحن فيه وما نطلبه ونرتجيه من رحمتك في أمرنا كله فيسر لنا ما نحن فيه من سفرنا وما نطلبه من حوائجنا وقرب علينا المسافات وسلمنا من العلل والآفات ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم أشهد أن لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف 
سلطانك سبحانك لا نحسيتنا أن عليك أنت كما أثنت على نفسك اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد نورك الساري ومددك الجاري وجمعني به في كل الأطوار وعلى آله وصحبه نور السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله وبرز أن ثنك الله سبحانه وتعالى salutations and peace upon our master سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أما تكين ذا the Ruha. I'm really um, just um, maybe singing a, a few words of Nasiha until uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman arrives, inshallah ta'ala, on his request. In Tithal Amr Sheikh, inshallah. Fa we, we praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his endless blessings upon us. And um, in these last few moments of 
of Ramadan. May Allah allow us to see many more Ramadans, inshaAllah ta'ala. Our teachers have encouraged us to make many intentions. Like your actions are multiplied in the month of Ramadan. And uh, you get actions that are qawli, that you utter. And you get actions that are fi'li, that you do with your limbs. And then your other actions that are qalbi, that is basically connected to your intentions. So your intention is an action. And therefore our, our scholars and our teachers have advised us to make many intentions clo coming close to the end of Ramadan. Why? Because you are rewarded for your intentions. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Niyatul mu'min khayrun min amalih. That the intention of a believer is greater than his action in itself. Because your intentions can go where the actions can't go. Right? Your intentions can go where the action can't go. So uh, a simple example, there are certain salawat and tariju that can be added into other salawat. You come into the masjid, you can intend tahiyyatul masjid, tahiyyatul hudu, sunniyatul uh, qabliyatul dhuhr. You can intend to make the two rakats when entering into the masjid, you can make the two, intend to make two rakats after performing hudu. And you can intend the qabliya, the two rakats before a particular salah. And you can intend tawbah, and you can intend so many salawat. And you're only doing two rakats. And Allah, inshallah, will reward you for, for, two, for all the intentions that you, that you made. And you only perform two. And thereby you can see that the intention is so great. And there are books written for, uh, on intentions. One famous book, the Book of Intentions, written by Al-Habib Sa'ad Al-Azadi. Uh, Habib Sa'ad Al-Idrus. A book just on intentions. Point being, now's the time to make many intentions. Because you'll be rewarded, um, your intention for your intention will be multiplied in the month of Ramadan, even for the entire year. Our teacher said, Habib Umar, he advised, intend what you want to do for the rest of the year, intend it now in Ramadan. And obviously, the, all, all the intentions you should make is to, to fast the six days of Shawwal. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man saama Ramadan tum atba' min sit min Shawwal. فَكَأَنَّهُ صَامَ الدَّهَرِ A person that's, that fasts for the month of Ramadan and then he follows that up with six days of Shawwal. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he gets a reward of fasting entire year. And the ulama mentioned an entire year of fard fast. Compulsory fast. That's a reward you'll get. And, um, so that's some of the intentions you should be you should be making inshaAllah ta'ala. And uh, I saw a lot of pictures and a lot of PDFs going around with many intentions. Even if you just sit now before Maghrib, this could possibly be the last day. And just read through it. And in your heart, Ya Allah, whatever I'm going to read, this is what I'm intending. And read through it. And your intentions can be included in those intentions of the pious. No. So we should be making many intentions leaving the month of Ramadan and also being in a state of repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for all the time we've wasted and all the time we've been in ibadah unmindfully being in ibadah with our bodies but our hearts and our mind were present asking Allah to forgive us and overlook us and accept from us our fasting and uh, for any flaws that we might have um, you know that uh, that's, that's part of our our actions. May Allah forgive it, uh, overlook our flaws and our and our uh, our mistakes. Insha'Allah Taala. And um, also, many one of the things that might come to mind is how do I, you know, have istiqama after Ramadan? And there's no straight answer. There's no straightforward answer, in my opinion. You know, how do I get istiqama? Perhaps the first thing we should realize is that it's very difficult to keep up the same amount of ibadah outside of Ramadan than that you do in Ramadan. Allah just, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made the month of Ramadan a time period where most people, if not all people, they're going to a different gear and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the explanations uh, from the scholars is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when the month of Ramadan enters the gates of Jannah 
uh, are flung open and the doors of Jahannam are locked closed. وَفُسِرَةِ الشَّيَاطِينَ And the shayateen are chained up. Then they say, why? What's the, the, the fa'ida of Jannah being open? If you're on earth. The doors of Jannah are open. خير, طيب, جميل. But we're on earth. How does it benefit us? Right? So one of the explanations is that, yes, we're on earth, but the doors of Jannah are open and it's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down spiritual breezes from Jannah to the people of earth. And when these breezes hit you, you receive a, a different degree of nashat, a different degree of drive to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, you see many people in a different state. They read more Quran. There's more people in the masjid. And so Ramadan is a different environment. It's a different climate in the Ramadan to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But... Um, uh, Looking at the word istiqama, it is very different interpretations of istiqama, particularly looking at uh, the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ For those who say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord, ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا And then they are steadfast on what they have said. So here yeah, there is difference of opinion with this. Istaqamu mean. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu is of the opinion that istaqamu means that they are steadfast on tawheed, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't ascribe partners to Allah. And in the context of the Sahaba, it's clear because they were in, or oh, most of the Sahaba or those who were worshipping idols, they were, they were in disbelief and they got hidayah from, through Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who stayed on the guidance, they get the bishara of تَتَنَزُّلْ عَلَيْهِمْ عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْسَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ Right? Glad tidings will be given to them from the, the angels that they have received the promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being entered into Jannah. But um, as it, you know, alhamdulillah, then Islam spread and then you have different other opinions coming from the latter scholars. So one explanation, one understanding of istiqama that really stood out for me when reading some of the tafsir of this ayah is Fudayl ibn Iyad, who was known to be a, a, a pious, uh, I think he's a tabi'a tabi, no? He's a pious, of the, you know, one of the pious of the Ummah of the Prophet But Fudayl ibn Iyad, his definition is Zahidu bilfaniya, oh, Zahidu filfaniya, wa raghibu filbaqiya. That's his definition of istiqama. Zahidu filfaniya, wa raghibu filbaqiya. Fania means something that is, that goes by, comes to an end, annihilated. Right? So, Zahidu, what does Zahidu mean? Zuhud, asceticism. Right? Staying away, abstaining. Meaning they abstain from that which is going to perish, the dunya. وَرَغِبُوا فِي الْبَاقِيَةِ And they, they exert themselves and they desire that which is permanent, everlasting, which is the afterlife. Basically zuhud. So to have istiqama, in his opinion, is to have a great degree of zuhud. And if you really look at it in, in Ramadan, what's happening? You're practicing a degree of zuhud. Normally things that you, that you enjoy, normally things that you engage in, that is permissible, you abstain from it. Food, drink, that you have to say, abstain from. Many of us, we, we, don't, we decide to not watch TV. I remember growing up, that was that's a no-go. The TV is going to go off at the beginning of Ramadan, you're not going to watch TV. Right? That's a degree of zuhud. And also, it's, uh, it's makru to wear perfume. That's zuhud. Some you can't, you must abstain from things that is pleasurable. Right? So if we apply a certain degree of zuhd outside of Ramadan, it's a means of getting istiqama. It's a means of getting istiqama. No. And also many of them say like uh, uh, Al-Habib Ahmad bin Zain Al-Habshi, his definition of istiqama is mulazamatu taqwa. Right? And this is so very beautiful because why? Because the Ramadan has been 
um, put in place for us to attain taqwa, right? And to have to stay on the taqwa is istiqama. In the definition of Habib Ahmed bin Zain al-Habshi, mulazamatu taqwa, to stay perpetually on a on a state of taqwa, to being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Um, uh, therefore, um, last night we were speaking about uh, some of the ayat in Surah Hadid where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا Before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself in a way, سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يُحِيِّ وَيُمِيتُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم. الله says he's the first without beginning, the last without end. والظاهر is the apparent والباطن and he's the concealed one at the same time. هو الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على الأرش. he's the one that created the heavens and the earth in six days and then he he took his seat on the on the, on the throne, obviously that is to be understood. I'm not going to get into the aqidah of what is the what is mentioned in that ayah. Ya alamu ma yaliju fil ardi wa ma yakhruju minha. He knows what penetrates the earth and what comes from the earth. Wa ma yanzilu min al-sama wa ma yarju fiha. He knows what comes down from the from the heavens and what goes up to the heavens. Then Allah says, Wa huwa ma'akum ayna ma kuntum. Wa huwa ma'akum ayna ma kuntum. After mentioning only is the first, at the beginning, the last, he describes himself, he knows everything, then he tells you, Meaning that he is with you wherever you are. And in a nutshell, if you were to embody just that part, that part of the ayah, it will lead you to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before you do anything, Allah is watching me. Before you go anywhere, Allah is with me. Before you look at anything, Allah knows what I'm doing. That's taqwa. Like uh, Sheikh Zaid was here on Sunday and he gave a very, uh, you know, what do you call it now, uh, 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 example that's more closer for us to understand. And even more than that, maybe what happens is when you driving your car, and inshallah we're all law-abiding citizens, inshallah ta'ala, but what happens is you don't always abide to the speed limit. I mean, you're driving on the N2, you must ride 100 100 kilometers, you're driving in the road, you must drive 60 kilometers, hey, I'm never going to get to my destination. Anyway, so you go a bit faster. But what happens when you when you see a, a camera, a speed, automatically you slow down, right? Or you see a, a police officer, seatbelt comes on, right? That's taqwa, isn't it? To a degree, you understand that there's repercussions. You understand that if I'm not going to apply to the law now, there's going to be repercussions, I'm going to get defined, or I'm going to get locked up, whatever the case may be. So the, he understands, when, you, when you're in that position, or in that state, you understand that I'm not going to apply to the rules. The laws is going to be repercussions, the same thing. But this should be in a greater degree, because it's regarding or it's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you're in a state, when, you, when any, before you do any action, before you do any, go into any dealing, Allah's watching me. What's the repercussions? What's going to happen if I don't abide to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's taqwa. That's taqwa because one of the definitions is امْتِثَالُ وَعَمِرِ اللَّهِ وَالْشِنَّ بُنَّوَاهِ To fulfill the commandments of Allah and stay away from the prohibitions. Imam Ghazali also mentions to, uh, to be in, don't be in a place where Allah doesn't want to see you. And always find yourself in places where Allah wants to see you. That's taqwa. So, uh, Shaykh Abdul Rahman is here. Yeah? And I'm... Um, خير سامك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الخدمة ونعوذ بك من النار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله رواه الشيخ شافع and increase him in all goodness 
I'm going to jump straight into the to the to every way to it. Ila kul fata tu minu bila. They said that uh, the forty principles is more for the brothers, and uh, to every young woman that believes in Allah is more for the sisters. And we're only going to be able to finish one of that books today. So we give preference to our sisters, inshallah. You can remind me, but you need to read now till the end, Sadi. We read on a good place, Bismillah. And where's my book? My believing sister, what I have explained to you should be enough to convince you with coherent logic that following Allah, the Exalted's revealed law, will only guarantee that you will attain Allah's, Allah, the Exalted's pleasure. What page it, is it? Page 74. It so also guarantees... Everyone on page 74. My believing sister. Hmm. Okay, Bismillah. My believing sister, what I've explained to you should be enough to convince you with coherent logic that following Allah the Exalted Allah the Exalted's revealed law will only guarantee that you will attain Allah the Exalted's pleasure. It also guarantees that you will realize all the meanings of your own worldly happiness. Happiness is not in realizing the fantasy that you imagine. It is in the reality that gives you tranquility and spreads calm and contentment throughout your life. Now that all of this has been made clear to you, it is time to get up and respond to your sublime Lord's ruling and to becoming reconciled with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after being in a state of forgetfulness and estrangement from Him. Take His straight path as your path to Him and His love as an, inter as an intercessor before Him. Leave people's criticisms and reckoning for Allah's reckoning tomorrow is more severe and immense. Rise above striving to please them and realizing their wishes. For indeed, rising to Allah's pleasures, to Allah's pleasure will make you happier and safer. If you are determined to return to Allah's path, you will come across those who will try to play with your emotion and put you under the pressure of these fashions that surround you the way a spider's web surrounds its baited prey. They will remind you of a such and such lady who used to display her charms in front of men, and a such and such lady who used to have her own literary parlor that was distinguished among people. I, on the other hand, shall remind you of a clear divine ruling that I have faithfully transmitted to you, and of the established hadith of Allah's Messenger وسلم, when he said, There are two categories of people from the Ummah whom I have not seen. A people who carry whips like the tails of cattle with which they beat people, and women who are clothed yet naked, inclining and making men inclined towards them, their heads inclining like a bactrican camel's humps. They do not enter paradise and they do not smell its scent. Its scent will be found at such and such distance. You will also find those who will remind you of the beauty of this worldly life and the temptations to quench one's thirst for its pleasures and delights. I, however, remind you of the gravity of its outcome and the massive consequences that await you. I remind you of the day of judgment, even though you believe in its existence. I remind you of the day in which Allah, the Exalted's words, speak the truth while He is addressing a large segment of mankind. Surah Ahkaf, verse 20. You dissipated the good things you had in the worldly life and enjoined yourself in it. So today you are being repaid with the punishment of humiliation for being arrogant in the earth without any right and for being deviators. I remind you of all of this because that is more conducive to your seeking felicity for yourself in both this life and the year after. Finally, let, rem let me remind you that all of these swindlers are only looking for the out for themselves when they claim to be advising you. They are only seeking to meet the needs of their desires. If you wanted a share of it for yourself, I would do what they are doing and join their party. If I wanted a share of it for myself, I would do what they are doing and join their party. For I am a man like them, and I have the same desires as all of them. I, however, by Allah, do not want to be my sin and your sin on the day of standing. I want you, with your up 
uprightness upon the truth to be good to be a good deed on my scale and i want to be with the truth that i have reminded you of a good deed on your scale i want for myself and for you something that is more sacred and felicitous than every pleasure delight and passion i want for myself and for you what i want for myself and for you is allah's pleasure A final word. My final word must be for those women whose hearts are certain of the truth that I have clarified. Although one of them might feel that there is some remoteness between the reality that she lives in and the truth that she believes in. So she regularly falls back on the reality that she lives in and apologizes to Allah. Regretfully. So she regretfully, not so she regretfully falls back on the reality that she lives in and apologizes to Allah or to people because she is unable to make this huge leap. Accordingly, there are a huge number of divergent men and women, and nothing is keeping them upon their divergence and preventing them from striving to rectify the situation other than the width and depth of the gap that they see between the perfection they hear about and the reality that they live in. This conception, however, is mistaken. Because the dividing line between truth and falsehood is only embodied in the difference between the nearest edge of falsehood and the first degree of truth. The difference between these two is a quick glance and a simple movement. The truth that we have clarified in the previous pages is not an independent conclusion sitting at the peak of loftiness and perfection. Rather, it is a ladder whose steps are close together. Its beginning starts at the end of the falsehood that you are living in, and it finally ends at the conclusion of perfection that Allah's legislation and the rulings pushes you towards. All that is required of you, after you have become aware of the truth and believed in it, is to start climbing its steps, not to make one giant leap to the top. If you do not possess the capacity and the willpower or helpful circumstances, with which you can enjoin upon yourself a covering that is long and loose fitting over your body and face and enjoin upon yourself something less than that which is facilitated by your current circumstances. If you do not have the capacity to change anything about your clothes and appearance, however divergent or remote they are from pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal, you should also enjoin upon yourself something less than that, such as obligatory acts of worship or reciting a portion of, of Allah, the Exalted's book, with contemplation every morning and evening. If you are incapable of committing to even this much on the path towards rectification, enjoin upon yourself something less than that, such as sensing the gravity of the state you are in and taking refuge in Allah the Exalted with a sincere, throbbing heart, asking Him for strength and assistance. Taking refuge in Allah the Exalted with sincerity is the source of victory and success. No person moved towards the truth no person moves towards the truth and starts with this step, turning to Allah with sincerity and resolve, except that Allah the Exalted grants him the success to reach the end of that road and arrive at the truth. It is an absolute calamity for you to know the truth and believe in it and then not take a single step towards it or have any resolve, as if the matter is not something that concerns you at all. Or... It is as if the one who legislated the truth and commanded to it will never grip you with his power and authority. Or it is as if the year after and what it contains are not worth a person's giving up any of his hopes and desires. A state like this is considered the greatest cause of invoking Allah the Exalted's anger and hastening his punishment. Allah's punishment in this life is not embodied in an immediate tribulation that descends upon a person. Rather, it is embodied in becoming close-minded and hard-hearted and thus neither, affecting, neither affected by any reminder, intimidation or cautioning, however, however clear the evidence may be or how near the warnings are. This is until death comes and seizes him and he is in this state. He thus turns to Allah the Exalted and his closed mind and hard heart turn into remorse that eats him up at a time when the remorse is of no benefit and there is no going back. Allah the Exalted described this punishment and its causes when He, Azawajal, said in Surah Ka, verse 57, Who could do greater wrong than someone who is reminded of his Lord's signs and then turns away 
from them forgetting all of forgetting all of that he has done before we have placed covers on their hearts preventing them from understanding it and heaviness in their ears though you call them to guidance they will nonetheless never be guided if you believe in allah then there is no doubt that you believe in his revealed law and the last day which is the day of reckoning of recompense one of the requisites of this faith of this faith is that you listen very carefully to what has been discussed in the treaties and think about it seriously this is so that when you have become convinced that i have not deceived you with false statements and that i only presented to you the pure truth from which allah Azza wa Jal, ruling is embodied you must embark upon implementing this ruling by going through its gra- by going through its gradual steps if you find that the, that the grips and passions of this worldly life and the customs of your friends and relatives are holding you back and preventing you from standing up for allah's command there should be nothing less than so- than sorrow pouring out of your heart as a result that agony that will take you to Allah the exalted's door and the steps of his mercy so that you can show him your weak your weakness and supplicate fervently to him about your suffering so that he grants you strength and success and that he gives you the support to liberate yourself from the sway of your soul and the sway of traditions and customs and from the sway of relatives and friends if your faith does not encourage you to do this or that and your heart is not moved by any feeling or concern for everything that i have told you then be it then be it doubt about your faith in allah the exalted's existence and know that if you continue like this you will arrive at a dreadful end which there is no escape you should know that the intoxication of this worldly life however delightful it may be you can be shaken out of it at any moment and that moment by allah is near and you should know that its taste however pleasant it may be is a lamp that will end up in your throat and that by allah is coming your way then know that if any young woman is tempted because of you today or his mind uh, know that if any young man is tempted because of you today or his mind is preoccupied because of that temptation and you were able to protect him from that you will receive an exemplary punishment from allah the sublime tomorrow at the end of the street is remember that i pointed out to you at the beginning which is that in the man's life the woman is the man's most serious test without exception make your taqwa of allah the exalted in your conduct something that helps the man strive for allah's pleasure and do not make perseverance in disobeying allah something that will help him follow shaitan's path and we only seek allah's help for guidance and success alhamdulillah and with that the treaties of dr booty to every young woman comes to an end um the way dr booty writes it's very clear that he writes with great concern he has no agenda there's nothing for him to gain he said he is a male and like a male he has desires and if he was uh, uh, if he was subjecting himself to his desires he would want women to dress openly and uncover themselves so that he could uh, fulfill his desires in that way however that was not is the case if i wanted a share of it for myself i would do that i would do what they are doing and join the party for i am a man like them and i have the same desires as all of them i however by allah do not want to be my son and your son on the day of standing judgment i want you with your uprightness upon the truth to be a good deed on my scale and i want to be with the truth that i have reminded you of a good deed on your scale i want for myself and for you something that is more sacred and felicitous than every pleasure delight and passion he's desiring good for our sisters and thus he's giving you these very important advices one of the things that he raised here um, that perhaps is is worth everything is worthy of comment but perhaps um, demands us to comment upon is um, 
acknowledging that every sister may not find themselves in that position to adopt the religious dress code in terms of hijab entirely and fully and 100 percent and when i say these words it's not words that are uttered to make the sister that has not yet entered hijab to make her feel okay that she has not because these my words are not intending to make you feel okay over the fact that you have not adopted and implemented the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's not my intent right? uh, every sister that has not adopted and fulfilled the obligation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she must feel bad she must feel bad and sad over the fact that she is not yet covering herself the way Allah has commanded her to right but at the same time we acknowledge not as a justification for the acts of lady that is not covering themselves appropriately and correctly but we do understand that it's uh, it's a journey and it takes time and sometimes the the most inspirational and best of human folk that represent the way of Allah and the Rasul and Sayyidah Fatima Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they too went through a gradual journey to attain that point in their life where they could actually adopt the dress code of Sayyidah Fatima, where they could adopt modesty, uh, etc. And, and, and that is something important to keep in mind. Dr. Bhuti is saying over here that no lady has an excuse not to, to make a start. So he understands that perhaps you can't dive right into it and make it overnight change. And there, there's certain, um, there are certain uh, instances within the Sharia that, because the, you, you have the hardcore scholar individual that is going to almost throw you out of the fold of Islam if you don't bring about immediate change into your life. Right? And uh, that's also not correct because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he, when he sent Sayyidina Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala unto Yemen to call people to Islam, the Prophet وسلم, he advised Sayyidina Mu'adh to take a gradual uh, um, attitude with people that are embracing Islam. So he said, you need to command them to make salah. فَإِن فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ When they start making salah, then you need to tell them that they must pay zakah. فَإِن فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ When they start paying the zakah, now you must tell them about the hajj. So the Prophet Muhammad advised Sayyidina Mu'ad to take this gradual approach. Again, this is no justification for a lady that, like especially a lady that is growing, that grew up within a Muslim community all her life. You know, how long does she still need time to bring herself to, to adopt the way of Islam and the way of the Muslim female? That of Aisha as siddiqa and Khadija al-Kubra and Fatima al-Zahra and the Sahabiyat and all the female scholars. Uh, that came thereafter. Another point that, uh, so in other words, Dr. Bhutti is saying that even if you can't dive right in, you must make a start. Right? That's one thing. Another thing that I always mention to sisters also is that um, never close the door to wearing the niqab. Right? Never close that door. Why can't you close the door? Because there should always be something in your heart where you uh, have a desire to become more like Sayyidah Fatima. A lady should never close the door to wanting to be more and more like Sayyidah Fatima. Because the more she resembles Sayyidah Fatima as Zahra, the closer she will be to Sayyidah Fatima on the Day of Judgment. There's a weak narration that our scholars consider to be the truth that on the Day of Judgment, like Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will intercede for his Ummah on the Day of Judgment. And he is our greatest hope on the Day of Judgment. For our sister Sayyidah Fatima Zahra will lead a large delegation of sisters into Jannah without reckoning. An announcement will be made to the people of, to be the people of the Mokif on the Day of Judgment that lower your gaze for Sayyidah Fatima is coming by with a delegation of ladies and they're all entering Jannah without reckoning. So don't close the door to resemble her as best as you can. Don't close that door. Always have that desire to improve. So Dr. Bhutti shared a lot, knowing, I think, uh, uh, what the role of a female is 
in terms of a modesty, in terms of a clothing, in terms of what her aura is and what not her aura is, and engaging with members of the opposite sex and what would be permissible parameters and what is not permissible, her involvement in a corporate environment or working for that matter, uh, she knows when that if she does do that as for her own benefit and because she wants, and if she wishes to assist her husband, then by all means she can assist her husband at long as she knows that it's not an obligation and the husband doesn't make her feel that she's obligated to, to contribute. I think those understanding of the ahkam related to the female may be somewhat clear to a certain extent, alhamdulillah, through the cause of this program. But it's the implementation side of what was covered. So in terms of implementation, always try to improve and increase. The Prophet wasallam said about a believer, that no two days of a believer should be the same. There should always be something that you are adding. <laughs> right? If I look at the khulasa of Sayyid Habib Umar, um, the khulasa that uh, we received from Habib in 2010 when we connected to him, and the adhkar that I read today now, uh, 14 years later, every year there's a small addition that Habib would add. There's always increase. A believer's attitude should be that there's always an and increase, right? Like the, what got me thinking of this was this morning when they recited the prayer, Allahumma ya kafi al-bala, ikfin al-bala qabla nuzulihi, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya seven times, Allahumma ya kafi al-bala. That wasn't part of the khulasa initiative. And it's based on a hadith that on a Tuesday, bala descends from the heavens. So the Prophet taught the Sahaba to say, Allahumma ya kafi al bala, oh, the one who suffices us from all trials, suffices us from the trials that are descending before it even descends. Ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah. Allahumma ya kafi al bala, ikfin al bala. I know some people, because of the fact that bala descends on a Tuesday, they never have a good Tuesday. They never have a good Tuesday. Because they're in touch with realities that are happening. Whereas on a Wednesday, the Prophet ﷺ said the prayer made between between what wa kuka? Dhuhr and Asr on a Wednesday is never rejected. So the person that uh, I know people they feel uh, troubled on a Tuesday, but on a Wednesday they feel ease. Because the eyes are accepted on this day. That's what happens when you're connected to your Lord. But if you're not connected to Allah and with the realities that are existing within this cone, within this exist within the existence, then a Tuesday doesn't matter to you, and a Wednesday doesn't matter to you, and if Thursday night comes in and it doesn't matter to you, and a day of Juma comes in, it's all the same, it doesn't make any difference. Because I'm so tied into this Western world that I forget about the realities that exist within the within an Islamic paradigm. So our sisters, may Allah make the implementation easy. May they always increase and do something small to better themselves in drawing closer to the way of Sayyidah Fatima. And many of these things can only happen when husbands play their role. Right? When the husband plays his role, then it becomes easier for the lady to, for the lady to follow. Um, also what Imam Ghazali mentioned yesterday is important. Because he said that, he spoke of Allah's systems in this universe. And uh, the examples he made, it's very interesting that um, some of the brothers, the only thing they left yesterday's dars with was some of the remarks that Imam Ghazali made. Uh, the reason he made those remarks, they even forgot about that. They were just worried about the remarks that he made. What page was it on now? So he, he said about Allah's systems, right? And how an action that you perform has a certain... We, we live in a world where the fire burns and the knife cuts. Cause and effect. So we only see how physical things brings about a physical, a physical effect. But we don't realize that there are also actions that I perform has an unseen effect within this existence. Right? Good deeds remove bala. That's one example. You do some good actions and Allah protects you or your family or someone in some other part of the world from, from a bala, from a trial, from a test. 
الله سيد ظهر الفساد في البحر ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس مشف gets spread on the oceans and the lands on account of the doings of man so everything in existence we do has an effect sometimes it's obvious and makes logical sense and sometimes there's absolutely no relation between the two he made the example of a magnet and metal and how it attracts metal that's not something where you can follow analogy it's something out of the norm why is one metal attracting another metal because Allah placed that quality within it so there are certain actions that you do that Allah placed certain outcomes like a magnet attracts metal certain actions you do produces certain outcomes and uh, the examples he made were uh, based on a number of weak narrations that was not necessarily uh, uh, considerations that were uh, about, well, the examples he made was based on weak narrations that was not accepted by the ulama not by all of them like many of the latter ulama they did not accept these statements that Imam Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala made not that they should be discarded altogether but I for some reason can't find it what was it now I spoke about sexual relations with one's wife. Ajeeb. <coughs> eh? Sorry? Are you sure 127? I don't see nothing about sexual relations with me. Hey? Eh? Oh yeah. He has it now. Okay. I didn't look familiar to me because I when he was reading I was falling from the Arabic and it looked it was laid out different. Like all of these narrations are not authentic. But he was trying to drive home a point how one action could have an effect. So he said, um, um, he said, for example, none of you should talk much when making love, for verily muteness of the child comes from it. None of you should look at the private part of his wife while he's making love to her, for verily blindness comes from it. None of you should kiss his wife while he's making love to her, for verily deafness of the child comes from it. And so forth and so on. These narrations are not authentic. And uh, even the effects that Imam Ghazali speaks of here is not consistent. It doesn't, it doesn't happen otherwise. If that was the case, we should have a world that was filled with mutes and deaf and blind. And, right? Um, of course, the point Imam Ghazali is making is still a very important point. And that is your actions have consequences. And uh, one of the important things that uh, Dr. Bhuti conveyed yesterday is that a lady should know that every time she disobeys Allah by uncovering herself, by not adopting modesty, it brings about uh, complications in her life and closes doors for her that she cannot imagine. And every time she covers herself and adopts modesty and upholds the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are doors being opened from for her from where she cannot imagine. <laughs> right? And this falls into a, a, a broader understanding of the Sharia. Whenever a person does good, there's uh, two things, one of two things must happen whenever you do something good. Whenever I do something good, one of two things must happen. What is it? The good must either bring more good into my life or it must protect me from harm. What must protect me from harm? Every bad thing I do, two things must happen, come what may. The bad thing I do should either result in something bad happening to me, or it prevents good from coming to me. And take that as, a, as an important lesson. Every time a lady covers up and implements the Sharia and doesn't speak unnecessary to males, etc., then she is guaranteed that some good is going to come to her, come her way. And if some good doesn't come her way, she's being protected from something bad. As how 
whenever she exposes the aura, or whenever a male looks at the aura of a strange female, or whenever we sin in a general sense, then two things is happening. Either I'm, it's going to be the result that something bad happens to me, or I'm going to be deprived of some good that was supposed to have come my way. The example, um, our, one of our teachers in the Naqshabandi Silsila, Sheikh uh, Adil Al-Kayali, um, one of the mashayikh we met from Halab that gave us ijazah in his works as well as in the tariqah. He gave us ijazah in the Naqshabandi tariqah. Um, he said, one of the examples he made, he gave a number of examples, but this one example keeps on popping in my mind and I should actually look at the other examples he made. But nonetheless, he said that it was a very real one to him because in his locality there was a Mu'addin. And uh, this Mu'addin had this understanding that every good deed brings good or prevents harm. And he was his son went on a road trip with some of his friends and he put them farewell and they left. And then he prayed Maghrib and Isha and then he went to bed the night and he fell asleep. And in the middle of the night, someone came knocking on his door. So when he heard somebody knocking on the door, he thought, who can be this late at my house? And so he went up and he went to the door and there was a beggar looking for a sandwich. And immediately he told himself, a beggar coming to my door in the middle of the night? This must be Allah wanting me to do a good deed to give me some good to pro pro protect me from harm. So he went, he made a sandwich and he gave it to the beggar, middle of the night. And then he went back to bed. And then before Fajr, he receives a call. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah, his son on the phone. His son says, oh my father, on the road trip I went with my friends, we met up in an accident and all my friends passed away, I, I'm the only survivor. So he says, that's why Allah sent that man to my house. That's why Allah sent that man to my house. Another story that... Uh, uh, Habib Zain narrates in his fawaid, he says that there was a lady who uh, she was she herself was hungry and she was about to eat a piece of bread when a beggar came away and the beggar was even more hungry than what she was so she took a bread and she gave it to the beggar and uh, of some time went by and she had a child and the child went out playing in the woods and a wolf came and snatched the child and started running away and she ran after and she was crying my child my child and uh, until she gave up hope until she saw a man in white clothing which was actually an angel and the man brought the child took the child from the wolf and brought the child back to her and when the man gave her the child the man said to her Allah has sent me to um, he, he said it's, it's one morsel for another morsel because you gave that morsel of food to a beggar, Allah instructed me to take this morsel away from the wolf and to bring your child back to you. Luqmatun li luqma. Subhanallah. So, uh, our sisters, most sisters, they know what they want in life. Every lady wants stability. Every lady wants, no lady wants to become a professional and to have a nice apartment on Sea Point that crosses over the ocean and drives a fancy car, but she has no one to come home to. She has no support structure. When she has a bad day in, on, in the office, she has no shoulder to cry on. But every lady, she wants the same thing. She wants a husband that supports her, a husband that she can confide in, a husband that loves her and cares for her, Right, that does small kind things for her, right? And then beyond that, most ladies they also want children, they want families. That's the happiness that a lady looks for. It doesn't matter how the West has tried to infiltrate their minds and putting other concepts and ideas in the mind. At the end of the day, that's what a lady wants, right? And of the great doors to that happiness and to that settling down and to that comfort is to uphold the law of Allah. Protect yourself, protect your modesty, cover yourself appropriately, live a good life, don't 
intermingle or chat to speak to strange men unnecessarily. These are things that will secure happiness for you. Every good deed brings good or protects you from evil. The alternative position, the alternative position has proved itself to fail over and over and over again. The alternative position that says a lady, she should uncover herself and get a job and she should work and she should earn income. All that brings to the lady is more heartbreak and more heartbreak and more heartbreak. Can there be a better system than the creator of the universe created? Can anyone produce a system better than Allah who created us? How is it possible that Allah created us? And then he legislated for us that which is in our best interest. And then I leave that which Allah has given because of some feminist or modernist or president or pop star. I leave what Allah has given me for what they have to offer. Of course it's going to lead to destruction. Of course it's going to lead to heartbreak. Of course it's going to lead to problems. So Dr. Bhuti He's not only telling you, as we conclude with this, to every young woman who believes in Allah, He's not only telling you what you should do and what's obligatory upon you, sincerely from His heart, but He's also telling you that if you were to do this, you will find the happiness that you are looking for. You will find the contentment that you are looking for. You will find the peace that you are looking for. You will find the stability that you are looking for. And above all of that, Allah will be pleased with you. Allah will be pleased with you. And if He is pleased with you, then it doesn't matter who says what. Doesn't matter. Like if the entire existence wants to benefit you in any way, they will not be able to benefit you except to the extent and the decree that Allah has decided. And the Prophet said, if all of creation wants to harm you with all their weaponry and all their guns and all their missiles, they won't be able to harm you except to the extent that Allah has recorded and written. If all of them come and Allah decides that no one's going to touch you, no one will touch you. Right? So similarly, nobody can present a system, system or a way of life that is going to be more beneficial to you than the way of life that Allah wants from you. And what Allah wants from you is the way of Sayyidah Fatima, is the way of Sayyidah Khadija, it's the way of Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and the mothers of the believers. That is Allah's system and that's what Allah wants and that is what will ultimately bring happiness and contentment to your heart. That's what Dr. Bhuti is sharing. He's telling what you should do but in addition to what you should do he's telling you the fruits if you are to do this the fruits are happiness and contentment. No. We're not going to get to that now. May Allah protect our wives, our mothers, our daughters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to play our role in guiding them to live a life that is pleasing to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our daughters and our mothers and our wives to realize the importance of upholding the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah, Ya Rabb, we know that there are many challenges in their path and there are many difficulties in their path. And there are many shayateen that are trying to pull them away from this path. Ya Rabb, keep them firm. Make them strong. May they become role models for other sisters within our society. May they become uh, representatives of Sayyidah Fatima Zahra on the lands. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our sisters that are present with us and those following the stream. May Allah make it possible for them to adopt the teachings of Dr. Bhuti in this book. Which in reality is the teachings of Allah and the teachings of His Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in so doing, may our sisters become keys to goodness, mafatih al khair, magalik li sharr, and locks to evil. May Allah allow that our sisters that are with us and following embody this book and become great sources of light and guidance for the human of our time. May Allah allow them to become role models for the human of our time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use them to serve deen. May Allah allow use our wives and our daughters and our mothers to serve deen. Ya Rabb, use our daughters and our wives and our mothers to serve deen. Amin, Ya Rabb. May they become teachers of this deen, ambassadors of this deen. May they show the world the beauty of Islam. That Islam is a religion where the lady is honored. Where the prophethood of Rasulullah began in the lap of Sayyidah Khadija al-Kubra. 
And the Prophet Sallallahu journey of prophethood ended in the lap of Sayyidah Fatu Naisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So revelation started in the lap of Khadija, ended in the lap of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. They, may they show the world that Islam is a religion where women are honored, where they are respected, where the reverence is shown to them. Where the Prophet taught us that Jannah lies beneath the feet of one's mother. We told us the man that raises three children and perfects the upbringing is guaranteed the place in Jannah. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, what if a man only has two daughters? He said, whoever perfects the upbringing of two daughters, he embodies within them the teachings of this book of Dr. Bhuti, guaranteed Jannah. Ya Rasulullah, what if a person only has one daughter? If he perfects the upbringing of one daughter and instills within her the teachings of Islam and the upbringing of Islam, which is encompassed in this book of Dr. Bhuti, guaranteed a place in Jannah. That's the honor that, that a woman holds within Islam. May Allah allow our sisters to show the world what Islam, how Islam views women and how Islam treats women and how honored women are in, the, in existence while being active members in society, while being teachers in society, while being servants to our society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every lady that participated in this course and went through this text, both present and online, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to witness from them that which will bring coolness to our eyes and the eyes of our teachers and above all the eyes of Sayyidina Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that which will be pleasing to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of us. May I accept our fasting, may I accept our Ramadan, may I accept our classes, may I accept this rawha. Ya Rabbi, we gathered every day in this masjid, reading the words of, your, of the scholars of this deen, of Imam Ghazali and Dr. Bhuti, which is in actual fact the teach your teachings of the Quran and Sunnah. Ya Rabbi, accept our classes. Ya Rabbi, accept our taraweeh. Accept our Ramadan. Ya Rabbi, let us not be our last Ramadan. Grant us many Ramadans. And many Ramadans and many Ramadans. And may every Ramadan be a Ramadan we are able to increase in good and increase in closeness to you. Ya Rabbi, let this Ramadan not go by say that you favor us with taqwa. Ya Rabbi, favor our sisters with taqwa. Ya Rabbi, let us implement your Sharia as best as we possibly can. May we implement it in the morning and day. May we become replicas of your Prophet May our mornings resemble his morning and our afternoons his afternoon and our evenings his afternoon. Ya Rabbi, if you don't accept from us, then of what use was Ramadan to us? If you don't accept our fasting, then of what use was our fasting? If you don't accept the Qur'an we recited, then of what use is our Qur'an to us, the recitation of the Qur'an to us? If you don't accept our Taraweeh and Tasbih and Tahajjud, then of what benefit is our Taraweeh and Tahajjud to us? Ya Rabbi, we are at your door, we are knocking at your door, we are asking from you, and you are kind, and you are generous, and your generosity has no limits. For you to accept from us on this day, Ya Rabbi, is easy for you. Ya Rabbi, accept from us. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami al-alim. Wa tub alayna ya mawlana innaka anta tawabu al-rahim. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala sahbihi wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-musaleen. Wa alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. With these intentions, we recite Surah Fatiha to the ruha of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد If the moon is not sighted uh, nationwide today then there will be no rawha tomorrow but they will have a collective uh, khatam of the Quran as we usually do on the last day of Ramadan Details of that will be shared in due time, inshallah.